Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. I'm here with my co-host Jeff Kelly, and this is the Cube Silicon Angles continuous production here, day-long production of MongoDB Days. We're here in New York City. Uh, it's where all the action is. Developers around the Mongo uh, DB community. TenGen, of course, is the big uh, sponsor of this event, building out the ecosystem around MongoDB, a company with great deal of success. We had Max Shearson on earlier talking about that, but Jerry Cuomo is here. He's an IBM fellow and the CTO of WebSphere. Jerry, welcome to theCUBE. Great to be First here, First time on theCUBE, yeah. I believe. Yeah, great to be here. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so you guys have been in the news with Mongo. Yes, we um, have. We were talking off camera. We, uh, we love IBM's <laughs> open source mojo. I mean, you guys have made a real commitment to the open source community. Uh, and you've, you've made a lot of money in open source. Sure, a lot yeah. of people say, ah, yeah. oh, can you make money? Well, IBM has proven that you know, yeah. for decades now. Um, big commitments from the, the most senior level people, you know, including guys like Steve Mills, Absolutely. who I told you we've had yeah. on, and Ambush um, Goyal, and really talking the open source game, but also walking the walk. So this week you guys, or I guess last week, made an announcement uh, with TenGen around Mongo, uh, around JSON, talk, talk about that a little bit, and talk about you know why you, why the WebSphere guy. Yeah, so Dave, he, you know, um, a while ago at, at the advent of the web and e-business, uh, we made some decisions. You know, Steve was right in the middle of it, Steve right. Mills, um, to take an approach around uh, building out our platform around open systems. So WebSphere around Java, you know, Apache, you know, and 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 some of those communities. Mm -hmm. And almost like in a Pavlovian way, right? The web bell rang. We responded and got a cookie, right? <laughs> and and you know it, it it was it was a good thing, right? And and now, the bell is ringing again, but it's 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 resonating much deeper, you know. And that's the mobile bell, with, you know, in, in its wake, it ha there is big data and social and analytics and cloud, right? So. You know, what are we going to do, right? We're going to respond the way we responded before around open systems and hope we get another cookie, right? And, and specifically, uh, Dave, what I mean there is when you look at building an end-to-end -end mobile application, you know, I'm not talking about Angry Birds. I'm not talking about something that just runs on the client. I'm talking about an application that talks out to a back-end system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think in terms, from a developer perspective, of concept count, you know, you're building an application. How many of those cute O'Reilly books with the animal covers, how many as a developer do you have to have in your brain to build, to accomplish something, an, a, a task? And building an end-to-end -end mobile application is pretty daunting these days. Counts up count is high, I'm not going to put a number on it, but it's, it's, it's non-trivial. And something dawned on us. There is, what I like to uh, echo as the JavaScript everywhere movement that probably for the first time in my 25 years in IT, you have JavaScript prominently on the devices. You know, you can say a lot about device architectures with you know, Apple and Google and Microsoft and not a lot in common, but the one thing mm. that they have in common is open web. They all support HTML5, JavaScript, JSON, et cetera. On the server, you have server-side JavaScript as a viable option. Uh, and then in the database, there's databases, not to least to mention Mongo. So for the first time, end to end, we have the ability to lower the concept count for an enterprise developer who are building mobile applications with JavaScript on the client, server, and database. With JSON as the dial tone across those different tiers. So I, I like to think about it as the three amigos, right? The uh, JavaScript client, JavaScript server, and JavaScript database. So as we evolve the WebSphere platform, we'd like to utilize that same formula and have um, a set of capabilities across client, server, and database that simplify development for people building real enterprise mobile applications. And this ultimately leads the path to I love this. Collaborating with Tenshin. I love this conversation, yeah. Jerry. First of all, it's great sound bites. So we got mobile bells ringing, you guys got a cookie, mm. the concept count, you know, <laughs> JSON is yeah. the dial tone. Yeah. So uh, we got to go a lot of directions here. We, yeah. uh, how much time do we have? <laughs> so, <laughs> but let me start with the whole JavaScript thing. We were out in Velocity this week, yeah. you know, heavy developers conference, and uh, s heard similar themes. But one of the things we heard is sort of, the, well, I'll call it the JavaScript creep, you know, mm. and, and risk. 
uh, as particularly as complexity increases with, with mobile, um, things get more distributed. Uh, and you know the evaluation of risk, you know the old formula of of, of the probability yeah. of an event and the severity of event, and and with risk being distributed distributed that way. So, first of all, do you buy that that the JavaScript is, um, you know, it is everywhere. Of course, you yeah, just yeah. basically said that, but it's sort of uh, um, underutilized, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but we're loading JavaScript into every page, and and that creates challenges. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit, and. and and maybe talk about what you guys are doing to tighten that up. Yeah, so I, th there was a, a commercial, um, and, I, and I, won't, I won't talk about the vendor, but it was like, in my mind, JavaScript isn't the thing, it's the thing that makes the thing better, <laughs> right? And JavaScript, one of our, one of our uh, technical leaders talks about JavaScript as being a kinder, gentler, whatever. So in a browser, it makes the browser, from a programmer's perspective, a kinder, gentler experience. No JS, makes a POSIX environment, a POSIX environment, um, more palatable to program. And Mongo makes JavaScript on the data side, you know, uh, more palatable to, palatable to program. Yes, JavaScript is everywhere. And I think one of the things like we want to do, similar again, you know, repeating that pattern that we did with WebSphere, is across these tiers, we'd like to um, embrace a set of technologies and frameworks um, not all of them, but a set of key um, technologies that have vibrant communities around them and start prescribing for those customers who ask us our opinion, prescribing you know, uh, what are the JavaScript frameworks for client, server, and database and provide first class tools and runtimes. You know, we have an example, our Worklight product, mm. which is a mobile, one of part of our mobile first uh, set of capabilities, Worklight really embraces this JavaScript on the client and using technologies like PhoneGap or now called Cordova so that it can actually uh, integrate with some of the uh, native capabilities of the phone. So that prescription of things like jQuery, Dojo, and Cordova make a very compelling client framework for building mobile apps. And Worklight integrates that also with server-side JavaScript, right? So it's not every package, but there's a set of packages. But what about the database? And that's kind of what led us down the path mm. to pick up the phone and start chatting with the 1010 folks. We have the client and the server pretty mm. well uh, taken care of, but do we go off and invent a set of new NoSQL, Java, JSON it's standards? It's been done. It's been done. <laughs> <laughs> or do we... But you chose not to take that Do path. we find a vibrant community uh -huh. and collaborate within the context of that community? Right, and then and then bring it into um, a very large install base yeah. within so, IBM. So think about this, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff and Dave. Think about all of the data that is encompassed within systems like DB2, both in distributed worlds and on the mainframe. You know, exabytes of data. How, do, is there an opportunity to liberate that data to a set of modern applications? How do we unleash that data so that a modern, uh, in, in an enterprise, you know, uh, developer building an app could easily get to that data in a format that is consistent with the platform, right? So how do we transform the data in these enterprise systems to a simple JSON format and make it available to the new generation of applications? This is one of the twinkles in our eye at IBM for you know, how we bring these worlds together. Yes, we could have come up with our own specifications, but you know, the community that the 10 Gen team has helped cultivate is one that we want to join and continue in that cultivation mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. with them. Awesome. So digging into the partnership a little bit more, uh, so, it, so really it's about making all that data, you said liberating it and making it available to developers in, kind of a, in, a, in a way that's very familiar to them. So, so it's transparent uh, mm -hmm. in a Mongo environment, so yeah. building applications. So, so talk a little bit about, um, so, so what is that going to enable them to do? What type of data um, is, is trapped away in, in these sources and, and what kind of new applications are now going to be possible because of this uh, partnership? So we, we talk about, um, the style of applications as systems of interaction. Mm -hmm. Yes, we made up a term, but um, it's really the wrapper around you know, Jeffrey Moore's systems of engagement mm -hmm. and systems of record. So it's the convergence of the system of record 
and the system of engagement. So what kind of applications? Well, applications that start to blend data from both, right? You know, take, a, take an application, you, you, uh, you swipe your credit card at your favorite coffee shop. You opt in to a special promotion um, with that. The credit card company, based because you, you, know, you, you enable them to do this, looks at your past purchase history and decides you have a affinity for buying jeans. It also realizes that two doors down is a clothing store. Before you finish your cup of coffee, it offers you a 30% coupon to go and you know, kind of text that to you. You finish your cup of coffee, you say, what the hell, what's another pair of jeans? Think about that system of interaction mm -hmm. that blends new modern mobile uh, techniques, you know, things like um, geofencing, notifications, and mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. with your system of record, right? Your past purchase history, mm -hmm. credit card transaction. Mm -hmm. So how do you build, that's a, that's a pretty cool kind of application scenario. It's absolutely mobile first, but it goes well beyond mobile. It interacts right. with your enterprise's existing data. So mm -hmm. how do we make that a pleasurable experience to build such an application that's a system of interaction? That's the use case. Those are the types of okay. use cases that we mm -hmm. believe, you know, working on these standards could help do. You know, create a common programming model across a system of record mm -hmm. and a system of engagement. So in that scenario you played out, there's also there's some analytics being, being oh, happening there. So what role does analytics play in building those kind of applications? Just to kind of use that example, they've, they've determined you've got an affinity for buying certain type of genes, well they've got to, they've got to figure that out from the data. That's some kind of analysis that's, is running that's, there. That's almost like finding a business needle in a haystack. You know, how do you, in real time, because you know, well, right, exactly. When it, they finish that cup of coffee, there, yeah. you know, and it may just be like a shot of espresso, so it may <laughs> only be like a minute you have, and you have to make that, you have that mm -hmm. one opportunity Right. To, to make that connection for that for that uh, for that customer. So, big data and analytics are key. Techniques like partition data sets, mm -hmm. um, sharding, and and some of these um, normalizing schema. Uh, all of these things are key to being able to get that real time interaction going. And if you're converting between, you know, um, Java objects to XML to mm -hmm. JSON to you know JavaScript. You're going to miss that opportunity. That person is going to be on to their next stop. Right. So, you know, again, coming up with that um, big data model that's consistent is a key part of the programming model of a system of interaction. Right. That's a good. You know, we talk about real time a lot, Dave. And yeah. what does real time mean? And we've often said it's in, in time to to make an offer or do something before make, you lose the customer. Before you lose the customer yeah. and make yeah. an offer that you know they can actually act on. Um, I Absolutely. think that's a really good example. Absolutely. Yeah. So talk a little bit more about um, about this mobile first phenomenon, um, what kind of challenges, again, we were at Velocity this week and we heard a lot about how, you know, I call it two steps forward, one step back, you know, the web's getting faster and then we introduce mobile. We talk like crazy about mobile and a couple years from now, we're not going to be talking about yeah. mobile, the world's going to just be mobile. Yeah. So that puts real pressure on application developers. Talk about that a little so bit. So Dave, I, I'm inspired most when, when mobile reinvents everyday life. Mm -hmm. You know, think about how the web reinvented everyday life. Imagine how mobile can reinvent everyday life. And you know, Darwin is neither uh, cruel nor kind. Darwin just is. And will naturally select those who underachieve off the planet or who too eagerly overachieve. Let me explain what I mean and how that plays into mobile first. It's not about taking your existing web app and putting it on a smaller screen. That's underachieving. Darwin will get you in his crosshairs <laughs> and naturally select you out. Toast. Customers will not vote positively right. on that. But think about the experience, the credit card swiping experience that I, I, I described. <clears throat> when you're looking at mobile, not only mobile, but as I said, mobile first, as a key motivation to reinvent your business. Right? Think about how you check into an airline right, with your mobile app. Think about how that you know, no more lines, no more paper, no more people, right, in, in, in the loop. Think about how that airline changed their business process of check-in, right? Think about filing a claim in an insurance app, right? You know, your airbag deploys, help is on its way as you're snapping photos at the scene. That's not just a mobile app. That's a whole value network. That's that business reinventing themselves in the light of mobile. That's what inspires me, and I think that's what I think the opportunity of mobile is. It's more than meets the eye, it's more than that device. 
in our definition of mobile first, mobile, you know, that, that endpoint could be a phone, and in, you know, in the majority of cases, but it can be um, your car, it can be uh, a pacemaker, it can be a hospital bed, mm -hmm. you know, anything that brings your business closer to the end user, right? <coughs> so building that application involves a whole value network. It typically crescendos yes. with the, the mobile system detecting data about the end user, enriching that data with the system of record, perceiving something through analytics, and then driving an action. Detect, enrich, perceive, and act. There's this little formula, and when you see that at work, there's a good chance that mobile is reinventing everyday life. Mm. Now, now, the other thing that's happening, I wonder if you could comment on this, is, is you mentioned the airline's business process. Yeah. If you think about databases today, they're generally isolated. They're relatively small. When you look yep. at the average database size, it's not you know, enormous. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not petabytes, right? And so, and part of that is by design because you got you to make calls to the database and it's got this mechanical thing called a spinning disk and it's slow. Mm -hmm. um, and so, we've got you know, analytic systems isolated from transaction systems and you just described a vision where those things start to come together. And things like fl Flash actually enable that. Yeah, you know, yeah. They remove that, 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 that bottleneck. But it seems that the, and I wonder if you could comment on this, the interesting part of that is our business processes have been built around these sort of bespoke databases. And they're sort of hardwired to them. Yeah. Um, and, and largely inflexible, right? We, oh, we got this technology thing over here, so we have to adapt our business process to make it work. How do you see that changing, specifically from a business process standpoint? It, it triggered when you said the airlines making that change. Yeah, so you know, I don't know that, that those databases are either going to go away or people are going to rip and replace them. But I think there is an opportunity to enrich those databases with other databases. You know, almost like, you know, those databases are the highways and the veins, but there's, you know, maybe around that, there's a little globe of data, right, which is the big data, that's actually, you know, data about the interactions, not just the data about the records, but the data about the interactions that form those, those. And I think those new classes of databases, as I, I use the word enrich, you know, I, I think they will enrich those existing databases, be related to, but work at a different volume, because you don't want to discriminate in those interaction databases, you want to liberate as much data into those, because the more data, the more insight you're going to have. So, so you're saying leave, leave them as they are. Leave them as they create are. Create this metadata data layer yeah. ar around them, this data globe, give access to systems so that they can make decisions uh, and then act upon that, that, exactly. that, that metadata. And then I want to also ask you about things like, even before you persist the data, you guys have this technology you know, streams, right? That's right. Which is That's amazing. Right. Yeah. Right? Now yeah. you're making decisions prior to even storing the stuff and maybe even blending it with other yeah. data so, sources. You know, it's, so, so we're talking about big data, right? We're talking about big data systems that enrich and complement systems. And of you're record. not even a data guy. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, <laughs> and, and oh, we're all kind of data guys. I'm a data guy, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, but think about, you know, we, we forget to talk about something as an industry. There's big data, but how did the data get there? So there is an era of big messaging, right? I am in the messaging business, you know, with, with, with the WebSphere brand. Yeah, we have sure. things like MQ. We announced a new product called Message Site, which is about the era of big messaging. And I think when you look at and, and think about Infosphere streams, it's, it's being able to, to deliver large volumes of data. Think about delivering you know, all the data from your cars. Think about a passenger in, in a car maybe having an epileptic seizure, but they're wearing some kind of like a brainwave monitor as a cap in the car, and their brainwaves are being sent out to some central service, and a, you know, their seizure is detected. Google you, cap. <laughs> or, or IBM cap, you know. <laughs> but, but think about, do, you know, are you going to make that insight after the data is caught? You have to be making yeah. that insight as it's streaming in, yeah, yeah, right? right? To, to in order to affect yeah. that outcome, and maybe so you can safely park the car on the side of the road before the seizure actually takes place. Right. And yeah, that, Jeff was out. Uh, we both were out at the the whole 
uh, GE Industrial Internet announcement, you guys are doing the whole smarter planet thing. Yeah. And that seems like a new wave. Yeah. You know, wearable big computers, the IBM big, cap, yeah. the Google Glass, Google Glass big, little. Big messaging is yeah, key to, that, yeah, to, yeah. to yeah. that delivery of that big data Absolutely. and analyzing in the stream. Jerry, yeah. awesome. This is a great discussion. Love, again, I love the sound bites. Really yeah. appreciate you coming yeah, on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back. Uh, Jeff Kelly and I, uh, this is theCUBE. We're here live at the MongoDB event in New York City. We'll be right back. Good. All right, thanks guys. Thank you. All right, take care. Thank, Thank you. you.